Hello, we are starting our new webinar. Today is our first donation-based webinar. Suggested donation is five dollars, but no one holds you from uh, right. donating more. <laughs> <laughs> to webinars at humancolony.org. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Nick, for doing the first uh, donation-based webinar. It Thank was you. a brave step, and you did it great, for the Thanks. Now, better than I, I don't know. Did you guys get down some donations? Uh, they're supposed to come to you. If you didn't get it, well, send for that one, I wanted it to be split, but I don't know what happened. Yes, very oh, good. Thank you. So now, uh, so send, send the donations to webinars at humancolony.org. And thanks for the donations which already arrived. Uh, they keep us going. And yes. we can do more now. Thank you. So now we are growing slowly, but there is tons of excitement. So now we have 253 subscribers, which is a great achievement. And mm -hmm. I always wonder, it, it took us a year to build a community with 253 subscribers. If it started again, it didn't take a year. would it take a year again? Or it just us changed. Maybe Jim and I changed. So, you know, if it started it, again, it probably wouldn't take a year. No. I or maybe the world changed. Maybe the whole world changed. Well, we didn't start doing this till September of last year, so it hasn't been a year yet. Yeah, I found you guys in, like, December, and that was your first video you put on YouTube. Our first video is dated November. Yes. Okay, maybe it was November so, then, yeah. yeah. It was the maybe. first one. Yes. And the site was started on October 9th. So it's not been a year yet. But Jim channels for a year. Yeah, I've been channeling for Jim channels since for, for Jan, July of last year. May. Actually, it's May. I have the first recording in May. Oh, you mean just the uh, voice recording? Voice. It was voice. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was that early. Oh, my goodness. So I'm looking at that as a fire. And you put, you know, I'm doing fires every day, campfires, bonfires every day now with kids <laughs> on the Durant Beach. And I, I come there, we collect some wood on, on the Ontario Lake, and, uh, sorry, and uh, and you put things in the fire. It's really hard to start it. Like, if one, one match doesn't, doesn't burn, second match doesn't burn, third match, then you put, like, four matches together, and it doesn't burn. But because there is a wind which kind of blows everything away. But finally, when you start a fire, it, grow, it grows and grows and grows, but if you put too much wood, it, it, it kind of dims and goes the way you get on the smoke. Mm -hmm. And then finally you have to put the right amount of wood and make it bigger and bigger and bigger and can, can, and can make it any size you like. But if you want to start a second fire, if you take just something burning and put it away, again, it, it fades. Mm -hmm. So to start a second fire, you have to take enough wood, enough pieces to carry another f and create another fire. And this is what we are doing now with Nick. Nick is starting his new community. He's still uh, to, to come up with a name. Did, Nick, did you start a new name for your community? Did you yeah, come I, up? Put it, I put it on the website and explained why I chose this name and because I asked for guidance. And it didn't take long because they usually respond right away to me. Um, I came to the conclusion that the best fitting name for it would be the Present Testaments. Okay. That's a nice name. What's a testament? A testament what? is uh, a proclamation. It's new te oh, that is a New Testament. Yes. Yeah. Old a Testament. And New and Testament. New Testament. New, it's a testament is like going into testament. the Present Testament. Yeah, it's a proclamation, basically. The present testament. Yeah, the, the present proclamation, basically, is what is it is. Is it one or multiple? Well, I'm putting S, present testaments. Yes. Okay. So... Our present testimonies. Testament. Um, testament. Testaments. I like it. It's nice. Okay. So I uh, now of, uh, invite uh, people who are technically... Advance to help Nick to set up uh, a YouTube channel, a free WordPress site on WordPress.com. They offer free sites, and a, uh, a Facebook group, and we'll help Nick to start his community. He has already followers, but it's it's important to reach the follower when he started his hangout. That's where he is a star. Where where Nick is really good is when hangout is already started. He can channel. He can. Bring That's people. the only thing I'm good at is hanging out. <laughs> yeah, Nick is good hanging out. So uh, help him to 
start Hangout and to bring the message to people so people are collecting together. Uh, you guys already have a group on Skype, so it is one way to bring people together. But because there is so much text there, it, uh, people just miss the announcement. So advertise your new Hangouts on our site, and it will help you start and build your own community, and uh, it will support you in that way. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah, so what is there something for me to do next? Because you told me a name, and L told me to do something, but I forget what. Uh, I invite people to contact you, and you coordinate with them, empower them, uh, chat with them, make, make it happen. Yeah, yeah. I'll start well, a new okay, and, uh, The instructions are done. Yeah. I, I can give you technical instructions, but, you know, you, you, you drive it. Yeah. Right. This and, is the control stick. Uh, the last instruction. Uh, first, we started it about two months ago, or maybe one and a half a month ago. Uh, started as a site. I gave you a site. It was uh, groundteam.org. And on that site, there was you, you were excited, and you put a lot of effort in it. Well, it just, that was the first day, and then I haven't had a chance after that. Uh, you put, like, 20 posts. But all the posts were only about you. It wasn't ground team. It wasn't the team. It was you. I suggest build your community so it's everybody, not only you. Well, I didn't do anything to the site. I only went on it once. <laughs> yes, and you put a lot of posts, but all the posts were about you. Now, you know, speak and then ask. What I only do you have think? my own experiences. Yeah, yeah. My, my suggestion to you, ask others, what do you think? That is what would be the key, you know, hard, hard question to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, today we invite again humans from the colonies, and it, I, I would like to ask everybody out there: What subjects were you interested in for today? That might give a, give them a chance to uh, decide uh, who's coming. Yes, uh, uh, I I would like to ask some questions about the colonies and uh, maybe to have more description if someone can. Of era or human colonies, okay. Is just to help us to remember something, you know. Uh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Is there any way you can channel these do? Because I have never heard you channel him. Okay. And can you actually? <laughs> is actually the uh, captain of the ship, as well. Yeah. That's in uh, in our over our continent. And um, he is sometimes very busy because our continent, unlike others, has a very high volcanic and seismic problem at the moment. Plus, very bad weather. But he he can come through if he can, if he if he's available. Takur is on the ship as well, but she's more administrative. She does all the records and organization and things of that nature, which are is much easier to do in their time than. In ours, but uh, she puts it in an order that they c that it can be recalled and remembered easily. Oh, so, okay. so um, yes, I can ask these two to come if you'd like. And he would know a, a lot of things about the colony as well. Okay. Because okay. he's in charge, he gets all the reports from the colonies, and okay. then he gives them to Takur after after he has approved changes and things of that nature, and then everything is entered into the uh, archives. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Also, if, if Ken Jean wants to come, that would be cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never I learned how to pronounce his name. Is Ken Jean. Is it Ken Jean or Ken Jin? Ken Jean. Jean, that's what I thought. Jean. Well, it's not Jean, it's Jin. Jin. Oh, Ken, Ken Jin, okay, sorry. It's Ken Jin. Jin. Okay, Jin. that's what I thought. I wasn't yeah. sure. He pronounce when he pronounces it. It could be either one. It's like halfway in between. Well, he was using my English pronunciation when I said it. Oh, very but good. It's like, because it's like halfway in between. I can't tell if he's saying Kenjin or Kenjin because he says it really fast. So, <laughs> it, you could say it any way. It doesn't really make a difference. And he, and I know Max asked what he would call him, and then he told me to tell Max that he could call him Coral Kenjin. Uh huh. Koro Kenjin. It's like uh, one of the names in Russian for king. Oh, Koro Kenjin. From Caroline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, 
I ask yeah. everybody to mute and I invite Jim to uh, to leave us for a short while. Okay. I don't know who's going to come, though. Uh, they make up their minds. So. Okay, see you, Jim. All righty. See you, Jim. See you. I'll talk to you soon. Have a nice day. I am these do. This do oh, well. Yes, thank you. It is I good to see you, Max. Nice to have you all. Thank you. I can only stay for a short time, but I heard you ask for me and I put Tepe in charge. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I wanted to know how often a week are we invited in the colony? How often what? How often a week are we invited in the colony? Is it like one day every night, a week? It depends on the situations in the colony. Sometimes you can stay for 10 days, but it would only appear to be a couple hours in your time. Okay. Sometimes as much as two weeks. Sometimes only a few days, depending on how you adjust to the colony life. How much fear and how much excitement that you show and how much communication skills are there. Was I there yesterday evening during my night? You were not in our this is colonies. colonies, but you were in Kenjin's colonies. Because I have a dream and I remember some stuff with... Uh, uh, sorry, but with snakes and with a reptilian who tries to channel with yeah. me, but I stopped the channeling because I, I was scared and I didn't want to speak with a reptilian and I saw, um, I saw also a part of his body. Yes, I don't, don't be afraid. These are only friendly reptilians, even okay. though their appearance might be somewhat frightening. There is really nothing to be afraid of. Because they, it's probably, yeah. What's he, what was he saying to you? Uh, I don't remember. He was trying and we were doing an experiment, but right now I don't remember what, what, what I was doing. But the body was like dinosaur and blue and gray, and the yeah. head was like, um, it was very strong. The body was very strong, very yeah. muscular, and maybe he has a um, reptilian dinosaur head, I don't remember very well now, but it was very strange and I was not scared in my dream, but I noticed it was very different, so I stopped the channeling. Sorry. But... He was a friendly reptilian, and yes, they have different looks. They, re of course, evolved from rept reptile-like creatures, and okay. so they came from cold-blooded to warm-blooded creatures, and so they look very differently. Uh, one day they will evolve into a more humanoid looking creature though. Okay. And wh what experiment was I doing? To, can you tell me? Because They were experimenting with your energies and they were trying to find out where, en where your energies were the strongest, which chakras were the brightest, they were doing energy experimentations on several parts of the thought processes. Okay. And what is the result? Do you I do not know the result at this time. 
Okay. And can you describe more the colonies just to help me to remember yes. more? Well, the there, are, there were many colonies, but they moved back down to three because the telepathic colony, number one, has eliminated the need for many, many colonies because now we know from the telepathic interaction the things that we were trying to find out from those other colonies. Okay, but I mean, you know, the room, so, sorry, it was more a question about the room, the room where I was in, it, it was like, what, which color, which kind of person? Oh, you were in colony one, yes. And it was in a ship, or I don't know. No, you were in uh, Ken Jean's colony, which is near the Earth. Um, we have not uh, brought anyone from a human colony into Grkvik near since he opened those colonies. We need to get some organizational uh, concepts uh, ironed out, so to speak, before we can allow more interaction. But we are working on that, and it will be uh, done shortly. Okay, and when you say near hers, it's uh, on the in the sky or in the I don't know. I will let Ken James speak to that. Okay. I'm I'm not at liberty to uh, speak about what he has done because he is a king, and we are a a uh, federation, so to speak, or an alliance, and so we have separate rules, and so I would not infringe on his. Thank you. Okay. I've got a last question. Sorry, guys. Uh, I think Lakesh told me I have a child with uh, um, who is special, and I wanted to know, as you someone describes the Plyel, if is one of them. Plyel. Yeah. Just a question. Plyel. Plyel. Yeah. I, I did not actually understand the question. Did you want to know if you have a contact with Plyel? Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I wanted to know if one of my child... Um, uh, child? I read or... Ah, you're one of your children. Yes. Okay. And one is a Plyel, you know? Yes. <laughs> your child has interaction with more than one kind of alien and so it is safe to say that yes Plyel wow. and Yael and Both Plyel. Of them or just one? It's more than one. You have your child has contact with at least three or four different three different species. Okay okay interesting thank you the the reason for this is that children are children are being taught many things to handle the change in the evolutionary cycle so they're taught how to understand things that are coming okay okay thank you you're welcome um this do hi this is safira safira how are you hi good we've never spoken I would like to thank you very much for all the work you and your federation and all the other friends are doing for the earth, for the climate and preventing or lessening earthquakes, volcanoes, etc. Thank you very much for that. We are pleased to help. It is getting very difficult at times. We are very tired at this point yes. as of some things because they keep popping up again and again. It's and uh, we do not know why that some things repeat, keep repeating on us, but obviously the planet is being hit by energy from the center of the galaxy, and this is causing things to be a little different as well. So we, we are dealing with it, and you are quite welcome. We know that this plane of reality, this timeline, must exist, and so it is imperative that we keep working diligently. Thank you. I have one personal question, if I might. <laughs> yep. I was told by uh, Kenjin that I was on Colony 3, yes. one, of, one of the E-Colonies, yes. uh, being, being questioned or interviewed. Am I being interviewed there like we, are <laughs> we interview you here? And not, not exactly. Oh, can it you explain? Is a shadow, it, is a, 
it is sort of a shadow of Colony 1 with many of the same things, but he has his own ideas about things, so it is not exactly the same. And all, all three of the different colonies are similar but different. Nick, you know more about so that. You, yeah, yeah. So would you and know why I'm... You weren't, no one has been, no human has set foot on E2 or E3 yet. In it or on it. It is oh, a would, spiritual he, entry? Yes, there has to be enough people active and consciously aware in colony E1 before they can move anyone to E2. I see. So, so the, I, the appearances in those colonies were all spiritual then? In those colonies they were possibly it's kind because of... They were, there were some people spiritually aware in those colonies. Yes, it's more of like a holographic um, room that you can investigate those other colonies and see what they have to offer. You can't actually partake in what they have to offer. In a sense. That's what I feel. Okay. I was under, at the understanding that many of in that went to the your Shadow Colony 2 were doing exercises and uh, learning things as they were exercising because they came back with sore legs and things of that nature. Uh, well, that was E1. Ah. It's all been on E1 so far. It's huge. Ah. I mean, it's obviously a gigantic colony. Ah, I was mistaken. It was not 2 then. It was so, one that they exercised in. Yeah, it's it could have been section two or something. I don't. I'm not very clear on the exact. Yes, there it was section two. Yes. Oh, it might but, have been. Okay, so there's E one, which is the the sphere, the colony, and then there's two orbiting ring colonies around it, which could be what they perceive as two or three. Ah. That, Thank that's you what, for clearing what, that up. I, yeah, was I didn't realize that's what was going on. I, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, so I've been questioned on colony three. I don't you know were, what kind of questions. Well, it was E1... Um, section three. Section three, which would be ring the second ring. Ah, okay. I still Therefore, your, your questioning was different than it would be in the section three the third colony. The third okay. colony is our filming and interview section. However, you were probably being prepared for something like that. Oh. Is this correct, Nick? I do not know all the facts about these. Oh, that's fine. I don't, I don't know. Colonies. Okay. So I was told that I have a lot of downloads that I haven't opened yet. And I... Could you give me some advice how to open those downloads? They will open when they are needed and when they are due. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You are welcome. Please do. I was wondering if you could comment possibly on the Yellowstone Park area when you see it actually not being safe to be around. It is, there was a point earlier this year in your timeline where it was dangerous, but we have calmed it down to the point where it is fine at this time. There is much activity on in the Yellowstone National Park area, Yosemite National Park area, that is still potentially dangerous. And also, California, there is a fault there that is very difficult as well. Very much in... It, it, and it's actually near a large population. Mm -hmm. And so we must keep that in check as well. So we are going back and forth between those two areas, and we called in extra help. There's actually three ships now in the United States continental area all the way up from Canada to Mexico your whole continent because there is much going on even in Mexico there are some areas showing up with volcanic 
intention. Intention is not the right word. Um, potential. Potential, thank you. Um, and so your continent is right now the most volatile. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I had a question about the Yael bases in Italy. What about them? Um, are all Italians like Hebrews uh, descendants from Yael? Not all. Okay, but they are is a strong connection. There is a strong connection, yes. Okay. Yes, but and yet that connection is eighty nine point four percent. So yeah, it is that. very strong. And my sister's go flying to uh, Italy today, so that's why I was wondering. I was telling her that it's all all the mafia families were different branches of the Yael family tree. <laughs> it it is unfortunately true that yeah. they were advised by the Yael. Yes. <laughs> But whatever. At that time, yes, in earlier times, <laughs> it was a fraction of the Yuyil that was determined that they could make a greater race by doing so. But it did not work as they had planned. Awesome. And you are Captain Yael, Captain Dizdu. Yes. And what was your full name? Or a longer name? Last name, perhaps? It is all okay. I do not wish to share that <laughs> right now. <laughs> but it is on It is on your... It has been recorded. Yes, I remember it was, yes. I, just, I remember it was very long. I just wanted to know if there's a short last name or nickname besides these two. But I know... No, there's, there's no more nicknames. Yeah, that's the best one. <laughs> There is no more nicknames, and it is it is not important that you call me by my full name. Yeah, no, it's easier to zip short it. Um, but I understand your curiosity, but it can be fed somewhere else. That's, um, um, just, just do I know that Laura has some questions. Laura, yes. where are you, Laura? Hello there, just do nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Laura. Thank you. Um, I've got three questions from a new member of the Human Colony site, whose name yes. is Sean. And what was he the name? His name is Sean. Sean. Yes. yes. And his first question is, were the greys created by reptilians? No, they were not. The greys came from a different lineage than the reptilians. The greys and the earthlings are closer in lineage than reptilians. But it would be a long story to tell you of their lineage, but they are not part of reptilian lineage, no. That okay. is false. Okay, thank you. Um, Sean's second question, uh, he lives in the country named Ireland. Yes. Which in Irish is spelt E-I-R-E -E and pronounced error. Yes. And he wondered if there's a connection to the era in the Pleiades. There is a connection in some ways, yes. Terra and Era. Earth, Terra, and Era are started off to be brother or sister colonies, as you will, planets. In some ways, after the fall of Atlantis, they wanted to be come brother sister planets but uh, and that movement started in the what you call the United Kingdom um, I have a question because humans found found the planet named Kepler 10c is Kepler -10C, it uh, yes. sorry what, what is the question ah sorry I wanted to know if era was uh, the planet human found named Kleper 10C because it's bigger than hers and it's in the Pleiad and it's um, there is water water inside on it. Yes. Is it? It is inhabited. Yes. Ah, it is inhabited. Okay. 
It is inhabited, and you do know of a species that live there. But I am not allowed to say which one it is because okay. they do not want to reveal they are more neutral species. Okay. So it is not error. No. So no, okay, it's another one. Yes. Oh, thank you. It's a larger planet, yes, than Era. Okay. Laura, did you she was con continue? Yes. yes. Thank you. Laura. It's Laura again. Um, Sean's last question is: How are the Irish people going to be involved in with the ET contact? The same as the rest of the world, because when the contact comes. All will know about it, or all should know about it beforehand. And also, they will just either accept it or not, as it were. Twelve places in the world have been chosen for contact areas. And these will be seen worldwide at the same time. It would first appear like a takeover. But immediately they will know that it's not. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a question for myself, do you? Yes. Um, does anyone from the Yale ship over Europe speak channeling through a human? One moment, please. Yes, there is one. I will let them identify themselves when the time is right. Okay, I would to share a for... channeling someone from the ship in Europe. Yes. Okay, are you able it to? Has the the least of anyone? Of... Oh, sorry. What? I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> it has the least amount of danger. The European area. I see. Are you able to give the names of any of the AL on the ship? One moment. I have to ask if they would like me to reveal their names. Okay. Tenda Larson and Fenjinda Kashai. Wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing that. Yes. And I'll pass the mic to somebody else. Thank you, Disney. Yeah, yeah, I have a question. Yes. Um, does the Galactic Federation or other councils that oversee the Earth, do they determine um, what memories we obtain consciously or subconsciously from interactions, or is that something we uh, control on an individual basis? That is a very good question, and it's partially both. There are times when there, the memory is not uh, retained due to personal uh, inability to retain it. There are times when we do not let them retain it because it's not necessary. However, in most cases, we try to let them retain whatever memories they can latch on to and most of the time it goes to the subconscious okay but there are some of you that can actually maintain the present with the actual event and remember it which is very unusual at this stage of your evolution another 12 to 15 years and most people would be able to. Okay, thank you. Well, just yeah. to, in connection to the memory question that Will asked, um, Ken Jin Ken couldn't understand why we could not have any memories of our visits to the Erin uh, shadow colonies. Is there Was there a reason for that? Are we not allowed to for some reason? They were, they were actually extracted some of the memories were extracted. Well, why? And we are still investigating that. Nick, do you have an answer for that? Or did he leave? I think he stepped out. Oh, he's not there. Oh, so it wasn't it wasn't like an uh, order yeah, from the question? Oh, we were asking why some of the memories were 
extracted, so they could not remember being at the colony. Um, technically, they weren't. It would appear that they were. <laughs> well, more of like a mist blown back. Um, it was a choice that everyone made after what happened in the last battle against the Shadow Swarms. It was not a bad thing. People don't remember. We celebrated afterwards. Well, some do remember being there, but not all. Um, not all. Some have no memory at all, and some have slight shadow memory. And we were assuming that they were extracted when they had nothing at all, since you wanted them to retain those memories. And I was wondering if uh, Gruk Fichnir had some reason to stop it. But if it's not coming from... No, it was you know, not from Gruk Fichnir. Okay, that was my question. No. Okay. Some we did not, people we did were not, not do anything to remember. They didn't memories or anything like that. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? There was another voice over you. Nick, did you say something? No, I didn't hear what you said. I didn't know you were saying anything. I was saying no. Grook Fichtnir had nothing to do with the memory loss. Okay. Thank you very much. It's always a choice. We have to remember. Nothing can really be destroyed. It can just be changed. Yes. So that is what I meant, pretty much, is that it was changed and not made available. Okay. Yeah. Until just it just they they think they need a that we all need a, just a little bit more time in our linear perspective. Understood. Is okay. do I, I've got a question. Can I, have a Can I ask a question? Sorry. Sabrina is a good time, I guess. For Sabrina, she didn't speak yet. Okay. Um, things that I got uh, my languages from the Federation of Light and not from Gert Fenier. Yes. Um, and is. In terms of task, what is the difference between the two, and do I still um, g do I go to both of them, or, or I, I'm, I just go to Gurfanir now? You have. This is a good question because we are, are in um, constant contact with the Federation of Light. We work together in some ways. There are some differences between us, things that we do not agree with, but in in many senses we are very much allies and you have become part of both interest to both Gork Fichtnir and the Federation of Light and Light and other alien species as well because there is one or two of your languages that came from neither. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Now, in terms of um, what they do and what you do, um, I know you can't summarize everything, but maybe, maybe a little bit of the differences between the two in terms of task and as it relates to the Earth. We are more concerned with you, your staying alive as a timeline. We are more concerned about your survival as a species. They are more involved in your enlightenment in many ways. They are more involved in your directly working with you in some ways. And therefore, they have given some of the light languages, the alien languages, so that they can learn how you are evolving mentally and find your channeling areas. Oh. We are not, we are working with telepaths at the same time, but we are learning more about the telepaths to help us with your timeline as well because human nature appears to be self-destructive. Yes. Yes. 
And that would, we are learning more about your timeline and your people to keep your survival. This is our greatest goal, is that your timeline survives. And we also are good in survival. You are good at survival, but you need our help because you do not know how to survive some of the things that are happening. And invite it. Oh, Sabrina, sorry for interrupt. No, it's okay. I, I, I agree with that. Um, um, so I'm just trying to sort out here um, because yesterday somebody also mentioned the Council of Nine. It's does that relate to Gertfurnier or the Federation of Light or that's beyond? We they are beyond us, but we have contact with them occasionally. Not as often as we do with the Federation of Light, but we understand their goals and means as well. And they are of a a very high thought. And sometimes I do not think they can relate to humans as well as we can now. But they are working in a very positive way. Okay, because um, I was told that I, I don't know how to put it, consult for them, with them, uh, with the Council of Nine. You will be able to consult with them, but not quite yet. Okay. All right. I thanks. must go at this time. There are things that I must... Hi, yes. this is Hayan. Just one last thing before you go. Uh, 2027, yes. what's your take on that at this point? That is, that is L's project. They are community of souls that are... You heard that uh, there wasn't a... That, that shouldn't be a problem anymore. It's not necessarily going to be as bad a problem, let's put it that way. But their, pro their project is to collapse the financial system. Mm. But not, not as many will be harmed at this point. They found something a little safer. So I will let them talk to you about it if they want. But L is the one that is the conspirer to evolve, help the evolution by changing the financial systems and the government systems. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. I must go. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Tisto. Thank, you, thank, you, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Namaste to all. Namaste. 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 I will greet each of your spirits individually. Namaste. Nos moritori te saludamos. Gora esoto. Nuo. We hash. Woha. I have come in place of these do he had to attend to some personal business. I am Takur. Hello Takur. Welcome Takur. Hi Takur. Hello. I am here to answer any questions about the Grookfiknir colonies. Uh, Caroline, Hayan, uh, Stephen and Will didn't speak yet. Speak. I have a question for you. Yes. Just wondering which colonies uh, I have uh, been visited. I've been visiting. You have been visiting in Colony 3. The reason why you have been visiting is that you have some talent for this area. You do well with communication, and you do well with advising people. And they asked for your advice on some things. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Thank you. You are welcome.
Uh, do you uh, also have any information about planet Hadar? H A D A R, the Hadorians. It's in my uh, bloodline. I have three percent of it. The Hadorians are not around the Earth at this time, but they will be here shortly, and they will tell you more. I will let Jim channel a Hadorian for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, take care. I've got the last question. Sorry. No problem. Clearly. Um, I wanted to know, can you give us a proof when we are in the colonies, like drawing a heart in our hand or something like that? Like this, when you, we will wake up, we will uh, see something from the colonies. They are working on a system to leave you with a memory that will, when you open your eyes, activate. Great. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Yes. Uh, Laini? Uh, Will? Hi, Taka. Laini. Hello. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, how well are the children doing, like my children being taught at the moment? Um, William is doing fine. He is a normal young man. Okay. He is no longer ill. No. And he is doing fine in his lessons. Brilliant. He will tell you. He will tell you what he feels you should know. Okay. Very good. William is very popular in his class. Great. That's Fun loving. Yes, he is. That's really nice to hear. And he keeps the other students aware of the positive parts of the lesson and keeps them away from boredom and they appreciate this. Oh, bless him. Um, just one other thing, have I um, been to any of the near colonies? You have no remembrance of this? Um, not really, no. Interesting. Yes, you have. Yeah? Yes. Okay. One time you were there. It was an introductory time. You were in the Colony 1 where the telepaths are, and you were actually just meeting with them. They had a question about your son being taught. And you were at, just answered their questions, and then you were back. You were only there for a day. Oh, okay. Interesting. Thank you, Taka. You are welcome. So, Hayan and Will, would, would you like to speak? Yeah. Um, I've Within the past two weeks, I've had multiple dreams where I think I'm in a deep underground base. Yes. And I've seen um, one man who was very pale and he had white hair. Yes. And... And then also I've taken like a, a an under underground tram through, yes. and so I was wondering if you could pick up on what I'm doing there and who I'm communicating with. Yes, I know all about this. Yes, first of all, let me say that there is theories out there that the Earth is hollow. This is not correct. However, there are great colonies and caverns within the Earth that do house some species. The species that you were with is a Pleiadian species. They are called the Nords. Mm. And they do come to the Earth's surface very often. But in order to come to the Earth's surface, they must dye their hair blonde as you call it, because their hair is silvery white and they look unusual and their eyes are a little larger than humans but not too large so that they do fit in they, 
and they are very attractive. Did you notice? Did you take note of that? Yes, I could. I could see that. Yes, they're strong and attractive looking, and yes, you were there and you rode with them, and there was a reason for this. But they must tell you the reason. I do not know it. Okay. I do know that you were there. And I just have one other question. Yes. Um, I'm aware of a hybrid child named Alex. Yes. And he has, like, it looks like silvery skin and, like, platinum blonde hair. Yes. Do you know what civilization he's in? He's on Era. He's within the Pleiadian realms. And he has, he's a hybrid child with Pleiadian, Yigil, and a bit of reptilian. Okay. But very advanced because he went through reptilian puberty very early. Something triggered his an early puberty with reptilian and that's caused an evolution in his brain like we have not seen. So he is being studied. I see. And Were you aware of this? I was not aware of that aspect. Yes. So who did I mate with, or how was this? How was he birthed? DNA was taken from your body and and put into a Pleiadian female. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Is it a good time for me to ask questions? Yes. Uh, one would be, are you aware about my new daughter? Yes. Is she aware of her new name? I gave her a name. She is not aware of it yet. I called her Maria. Maria. And in Russian, diminutive would be Masha. Masha. She is not aware of this since she has only been recently born. Hmm? I met her born. You met her? Yes. I, oh, met, yes, I was holding her when she was, well, after she was born. She, yes. she was already crawling and a little bit sitting. Yes. But they have not let her know what her name is yet. Where is she, is she housed? She is actually in... Terahata. What is that? Terahata is a colony off to 17 degrees off the polar caps of Era. Where was it physically there or spiritually? Physically there. It is a space colony. It is not a planet. Well, how is she doing? She's doing well, of course. How is, the, how is the mother? She is doing fine. And she got milk and they have normal development? They are fine, yes. Did she get a father? A uh, surrogate father? Yes, Les. Les? His name is Les. Wonderful. I'm so happy. Yes. Pass my greetings to all the three of them. It is done. Thank you. Um, another question is, how do you call Earth? How is Earth known? What's the name of Earth in galactic languages? We call it Terra. Ah. How popular is that name among galaxy, in the galaxy? All know about Terra. Uh -huh. How would you call call Earthans? Would it be Terrans? Terrans. Would it be a better name? Because Earthans sounds not very u often used, so Terrans would be a... We call you humans many times. Humans yes. and Terrans. Humans. But Terrans also are you and other humans in the galaxy, isn't it? There are other humans in the galaxy, yes. We refer to Earth humans as Terra humans, but... Terra humans. Humans, many times, when we when most people know that we're talking about Earth, we just say humans. Thank you. Now, the sun, how do you call our sun? Solar. 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 
And would it be many other species calling us Sola? Our, Our son, son, yes. There are many different languages, and your mm -hmm. son is mentioned many times in many languages in different ways. Not everybody calls it the same, but in Liran it's Sola. I just wonder, it's nice to know you, uh, you, wh where are you from. If people ask you where from you come, you need to know, you know say I'm from Terra in Sola system. And what is our star system? Like you are Liran, and what's our big star constellation? I do not understand the question. I don't know which constellation we belong to. Your constellation, we do not name constellations anymore. You <coughs> are in a sector. What sector would it be? You're in sector 5-7. Five, 5-7. Seven. Five, seven. Which number in system would it be? Uh, Gorg Fitnir, Galactic Federation, or Liran? 5-7 GF5. 5-7 GF5? Yes. And which number in system would that be? That is the number of the system. Nomenclature, I mean nomenclature. Which community of people in the galaxy would understand that name? Ah, uh, Grokfrik Nier would understand it. The uh, Federation of Light would also understand it. And the good and positive reptilians understand where we are. We use the same galactic sectors in many cases. It keeps us aware of where ships are and things of that nature. Thank you. That helps a lot. Uh, it's nice to know where from are you if you're traveling. Uh, <coughs> and the last question I had, uh, the Jameson of the colonies, the head of telepaths, Yes. he has the same name in, as Jim and he's from Ontario and Jim is from Ontario. Wouldn't it be the same person? Who is from Ontario? James, the head of telepaths, and Jim Charles, which you are channeled through right now. I am not aware that Jim is from Ontario. He told us a couple times. No, he is not from Ontario. Okay, so that's a legend. That is a legend. He is from Pennsylvania. Okay. So it's not the same person? No. I see. How much time do I spend in the colonies? You personally? Yes. You were there twice. I see. All right, I invite more questions. I have a question. All right. Continue. Okay. The female, Sabrina. Uh, yes. Uh, first, I have a question. Hello, take her first. Hello. Woha. Woha. Um. Um, Kaylin asked um, if you were the one who shapeshift into a man in the audition room and told her why she was there. I did this, yes, because she was would have been frightened with my personal appearance at that time, and she was seeking a more professional look. Okay. Now, um, my question is, have I seen you? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, and do I have any hybrid children? No. Okay. I didn't think so. No. There is a reason that you do not yet, but you will when you recover from your illnesses. Okay. There is one part of your illness that prevents us from using your DNA. That was it. Thank you, Tucker. You are welcome. Tucker, do you have any questions for us? Not at this time. I am prepared to answer, but I did not prepare anything. I did not know he was coming until these do ask me to step in for him. Are you following our organizational uh, developments? Your organizational developments are coming much more quickly than we had anticipated. Yes, we are following them. Can you give us 
insights in that direction. Just remain clear of your intentions because clarity <laughs> and intentions will help you move forward. I will give you more advice later where after you have begun, but right now your intentions are the basis of what is happening. Do you understand that? Yes, yes. Intentions we speak of often. But we know that you sometimes misunderstand some spiritual things. Yes. So keep your intentions pure and your beginnings will be bright. Um, to care, I know that Liney has another question for you. Yes. Liney. Hi, to care. Um, yeah, just another question. Um, do I have a hybrid child called Amelia? Yes. Okay. Could you tell me briefly anything about her? She is actually on era, but I cannot give you any information at this time. There will be information coming forth. She is in a specialized program at this time. Okay. Thank you. What did you want, Hayan? Hi, Tucker. Yes. How uh, good, good to talk to you. Thank you. Did you have a question? I sensed that you did. Yes, yes. I was also wondering, do I have any hybrid children? Payan, you are just in the process of having a hybrid child. Uh -huh. They are now starting to use the hybridization human DNA selectively. Because I never resonated with that, but uh, recently I have. Yes. All right. Uh, how is my hybrid hybridization? I will tell you more when it is complete. Mm -hmm. It is just now under surveillance and in the introductory stages. Uh, I know that I have uh, Yael, but uh, how much have I been uh, activating? Your uh, Yael activation has been 1.9%. But there will be more coming. It comes slowly because it needs to come and assimilate properly. And if that doesn't assimilate properly, then we cannot give you more. But so far, you are good. So 1.9 uh, <laughs> plus the, the old amount. Yeah. Correct. Uh, take care, uh, Mrs. Curley. Do I have some more hybrid children right now? Not more. So no. how is my little girl? I miss her. She is fine. I called her Capucine. Capucine is a beautiful name. Yeah. How old is she right now? Or maybe in your time, I don't know. Uh, yes, in Earth time, I'm trying to figure the difference. Six. Okay. Six. Okay, so she's growing faster than humans. Yes, they do usually. Okay, and can they you... They do be... have some control of what their age will be. Okay. There's a reason for that, but someday I will explain that some of the hybrid children have the ability to choose how quickly they grow and what different things they want to learn at the beginning. Okay, which race is she again? I don't know. That is all right. A what? Sorry. One moment, please.
They need me back at the ship. I am sorry. Uh, pass our invitation to humans in the colonies to speak to us if they can. Very uh, good. Thank you. Thank you, Chakir, for coming today. Thank you very much. Namaste. 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 Uh, Namaste. Oh, Namaste. Hello. Welcome back, Jim. Hey, how are you doing? Hi, Jim. Hey. Um, hi, Jim. Hey. Hi, John. Were you done with your questions? Mm, yeah. Thank you for asking. But yeah, almost. So it wasn't. It was okay. Okay. If we could all wait till the questioner says at least thank you, or or ask if they're done before we jump in, then. That maybe won't happen so often. <laughs> Sorry, that's okay. open a little, little suggestion. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yeah. good suggestion. So when you're done with the questions, uh, thank you and pass the microphone. I mean, that would be a nice, polite gesture for others to to know that it's time for others to yes. jump in. I invented a new sign, especially for Google Hangouts. So <laughs> if somebody forgot to mute their, their microphone, I will mute them and I'll give you a sign. Uh, I will. Which means <laughs> I, I muted your microphone, but you're welcome to unmute it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do that every okay. time. <laughs> Max. Okay. Um, How are you, Jim? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Any anybody want to um, discuss among yourselves what they were talking about? I do. I didn't hear it all, but I I get the feeling that some people are wanting to discuss some stuff. So. Yeah. Well, I thought Takur, the way Takur reacted when she found out that someone didn't remember going to their colonies as well. Right. That kind of shocked her. And that's yeah. why I think these do was confused. They're not confused. They're just, um, it's just the huge, I don't see, they, I believe when I first talked to, when I first got the, message was that they even blew a mist over the people that don't live on the human Gurkvignir colonies as well. Oh, okay. And I don't understand their exact reasoning. I don't either. But I but. think uh, Takur was talking about it, or Dizdu was talking about it too. Okay. I would have to, I have to go back and watch what they said. Okay. Yeah, me too. I, I have but I don't have memory of, of going either, like per se. I Everyone here has been on a Gurkvignir colony and an Aaron colony. That's really? a fact. Me too? Yeah. Every single one of you. Oh. Yeah, I just have yeah. very small fragments. That's what they want you to understand, that all of you have been there, and that's why they didn't understand. If you already knew that, why wouldn't? how come you can't remember even a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it's all very recent, too. Not yeah, long that's ago. cool. <laughs> it's all pretty recent as well. Yeah, it was all in the last crazy. three weeks that the Aaron colonies came and everybody started going there. At the end, there the last night there was 115 people, which are still there. You're just not going to still remember it. You can, and you can remember no matter what the pro protocols are because you make the choice whether you want to be behind the veil or on the other side of it. Well, why would so no many of ascension? Why would so many people choose not to remember? I wonder. So. Well, because what happened is like Bashar says, whatever happened the last night, we weren't prepared. We were prepared to see extraterrestrial versions of ourselves, but we weren't ready to see the dark versions of ourselves. Oh. Okay. And that's why people got scared. So they just decided instead of dealing with the shock. They'll just integrate it slowly instead of all at once. Okay. So it wasn't. It's just a. It's just a, a, a safety measure. Yeah, a safety measure. A per, their perspectives were interesting. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Can you um, elaborate on that the shadow self uh, thing again? Like 
Yeah, Nick, Nick about... can you elaborate on that? I didn't understand it either, really. I was going. I was just trying to think about it. Okay, well, the idea is that in the waking state, this 3D world that you guys want to call it is the valley of the shadow of death, okay, in, in a metaphor. So we, as human beings, these bodies are just shadows of our higher selves, first of all. Do you understand that concept? Yes, yeah. I do. It's like a, a third, but it's a third the shadow, dimensional. The energetic form. Right, we're third dimensional, though. Well, exactly. we're actually fourth dimensional moving into the fifth dimension. Where third, third density. density. Yeah, we're third once density. we're plugged okay. completely into the fifth dimension... We have to be third density to be here. Because fourth density is lighter. Well, that's where I live. Well, that's possible, but most of us are third density. Well, you're well, yes, exactly. What I'm what I'm trying to say is, um, you all you were already have been in since you were born in the fourth dimension. You're only able to perceive the three underneath of it. Okay. The three of space, and you couldn't perceive time. Now we're moving into the fifth dimension, where you could perceive the four dimensions underneath it, which is the three dimensions of space and the one dimension of time. So now we can perceive time for what it actually is move once we once we uh, integrate that concept of time is always here and now once you know that you plug into the fifth dimension once you're plugged into the fifth dimension completely and utterly and you surrender to it then you start you start shedding the ashes you start you start shedding the rust of the third density. You become but, lighter. You start eating less. You start needing less sleep. You start remembering everything of your whole yeah. life. But in order to get there, you have, it comes from down to the up. It doesn't come from the up to the down. Yeah, that's when well, I started meditating. I would always start no, meditating. You have, to, you have to be... Fully third dimensional to be able to reach the fourth, the fifth, and sixth. Because if you're not, then you you haven't grounded your energy. So, for being fully third dimensional is grounding, and then you can move up from that. But yeah, you've yeah. reached, you've all, you've already reached beyond your grounding. Then. Well, yeah, because I learned how to meditate first by grounding, and then they taught me how to stretch out. Yes. I, I just wanted to make that point because a lot of people are not yet grounded and can't do what you're doing. I'm finding that a lot that a lot of people are just want to be taken off the planet. They just, they right, just want exactly. to go. And it's like, listen. Can't you're happen. here to be here. And you can't leave until you have strong roots, both to the earth first, because that's where you right. are. Exactly. Then to the stars. Correct. That's what I was pointing out exactly. Because and that's part of the reason why a lot of people have to world. reach. A, a lot of people have to reach. Some people were born in like the fourth dimension, and they have to ground into the third dimension so that they can understand how to move further up. So does that make sense to you? Uh, but there has to be fully third. What's yeah, that? To, Somebody said something is not true. What? Go ahead. Maybe they're talking about something else. I'm sorry. Um, yes, but it's true that you have to be fully third dimensional before you can be can not. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be fully third dimensional to understand the fourth dimension. I didn't say that. But if you start off in the fourth dimensional and don't ground, then the people of Earth will not understand you when you try to talk to them or or be around them or talk. Teach them something because you are no, you have a fourth dimensional concept, and they don't understand it. So you have to ground yourself in the third dimensional, so that you can communicate with third dimensional, and then move up from there. So a lot of people that were born fourth dimensional in their thought patterns have to ground before they can be of use. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? 
they have to be useful. And being at more in third dimensional in I mean fourth dimensional in a third density doesn't work. That's why they, all, they put them all in the mental hospitals. Yes, that's correct. That's where exactly you hit the nail on the head. Those people that are born in the fourth dimension and uh, cannot relate to Earth are considered, re you know, mentally ill or whatever. So, well, like, um, um, unless they can actually pull themselves out of that, they have to ground themselves in the third dimension and then move. Well, it's easy so to talk to them to if you just raise your vibration. What was that? Well, because like now that you're telling me, like I was, yeah, I was, I was brought up into the fourth dimension when I was three. Okay. And so that's where I always felt most comfortable. So I always could relate to people in mental hospitals and you know mentally challenged people so much easier. You know. Yes. Dogs, cats. <laughs> I looked at it's them more as people than people. <laughs> well, their third eyes are wide open. Their yeah. third eye is like really open. When you're born into the fourth dimension, you can't. You're you're born with your third eye open. So, um, it changes everything instead of having to have it open. So, Jim, what is the your way of grounding? You're reasonably grounded now. How yes. do you ground yourself? Um, I do intention meditation on grounding and moving the energy energy up. Because I, I feel my fourth dimensional energy a lot. It's way, way awakened. I'm gl so glad. But I have to keep myself grounded for the energy, for the whole circuit to connect. So that's Are how there, I feel. Okay, I just, so I'm getting a different perspective about my whole existence now just from what you just said. Um, so from what I understand... Most humans are born in the third dimension? Yes. 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 How but our spirits are not from the third dimension. It's our physical body. So that's why after physical death, they go to the seventh. Yes. I need to clarify. I mean, it's very interesting how these days uh, a lot of discussions happen from misunderstanding. People start arguing when they just have different perspectives. There's no argument going on. <laughs> so, all this discussion comes from different numbering systems. There are multiple numbering systems for dimensions, and Nick speaks of Bashar's numbering system. Bashar says humanity is four dimension raised to the five in, most of, in many of his discussions. And our friends, this do and others, I often ask them what dimensions are we from you in your numbering system? And they say three. And what dimension are you in your numbering system? They say four. So Bashar and our friends speak in num different numbering systems. Um. Yet we have three physical, one, two, three, and time. So it's four dimensions. But again, the word dimension has two meanings, science. One meaning is measurement, axis, that's dimension. And another meaning is the wall, the vibration, the reality. Our reality is numbered third dimension in terms of our friends. I'm sorry, that's how they appear. And a lot of others also say this three-dimensional reality. And we understand it's us, modern humans, and humans 200 years ago were three, third dimension. Now, again, in Bashar numbering system, it's four. In Nick's numbering system, it's four. And then... How many dimensions do you jump up in some numbering system? The low one, channeled by Carla, give me the name, Carla Turner, the low one, the books of low one, um, Barra. Uh, they, the, the, the ascension goes two dimensions up. It kind of jumps from three to five, and then from five to seven, blah, blah, blah. In uh, Zechariah's, uh, he talks about jumping several dimensions up, and that's his number. Yes. Yeah, Roxanne was talking about a Pleiadian from the ninth dimension yes. and all this stuff. Yeah, it's not you that he's twice, it's different so it's legitimate, but what dimensionalities they're talking about is still slightly confusing. 
Yeah, it yeah. is confusion, but you know, they just confusing. have multiple number systems. They nice it's head. Just a different number. Hey, Lani, thank you for uh, lightening up this discussion. But what I'm saying, <laughs> you just have different words. You will be fighting over words, and it's not the way to go. And that now, I have a question from the yeah, peanut some, gallery. Some of them uh, talk in terms of density and dimension. Yes, density is a low one, and we are sort of density. It's quite, you know, when densities are when people speak about densities, we answer density and it's pretty much universal. So when you're confused about the nations, switch to densities. We are sort of density. <laughs> yes. I have a question from yeah. somebody in chat. And it's like this. Um, Nick, you mentioned we've all been to both Rukvik near and the E1, E2, E3 colonies. Just and this E1. This Just E1. Okay. Oh, right, the E1. layers of E1. Sorry. Okay. It's a different so, section. Okay. Now with Rukvik near, uh, somebody's asking, uh, normally we wouldn't be visiting there unless we had directly applied, or are there some who are taken there without directly applying? That's the question. They have to apply. Uh, everybody in um, the human colony uh, is considered to have applied because you're a member of human colony, but... Oh, uh, wait, 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 that's a little bit, there's a fine line over there, I hear. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I what I understood from Kenjin said. Uh, again, I'm not making those rules. We can, uh, you can also apply to human colonies. Say I don't want to be taken, and that would clarify. I want to be a member of humancolonies.org, but I don't want to be taken. Oh, um, okay. It's how you they interpret. Inter you have to apply to be taken. That's what I understood. All right, so we. <laughs> hey guys out there, if you're listening, you, uh, you, you, if you didn't apply to be taken, they can't take you unless you give permission. That's, well, they did. Yeah, well, someone uh, did say that they because the, in the beginning they were talking about how people that haven't uh, applied from the human colonies website have been taken at first. People from around right. the planet, right? Uh, that was a they, they applied through their higher self or their intention or their heart intention. Right. We're talking just Gurkfik near right now. Well, no, in Gurkfik near. Yeah, okay. Well, also, if they gave them permission, yeah. they're allowed to take them, yes. All right, so... Hey, I went out there above us, please okay. pay attention. So if if person didn't apply, it means they didn't apply. But if they gave they permission... They if, they, if, you gave, if they gave permission one way or applied through through the site, that means they applied. If they're just members of the site, it doesn't mean that they, they applied. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Okay, good. Very um, good. Well, I don't want to complicate things, but... <laughs> I I didn't apply. You oh. didn't. No. But you gave but, permission then. But, but I I was already a person of interest before. But you know, since I had the languages worried before Kurpanir uh, between the colonies. Okay. So, so you gave permission. They knew that. So. Yeah, I must have done it. You know, so because before it became the colony, so I didn't apply either, but I gave permission. Same here. So I went, but I gave permission, and they knew that I had given permission. I had, I had actually said it out loud. So it's kind of funny because when I found out about this website, I applied right away. Yep. And only like as the the last six months went on, I realized I had already been to the colonies twice before I applied. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So you're an exception to the rule, Nick. Yeah. There are some things about you that are exceptions to the rule <laughs> that I see. But, um... Yeah. Cool. I have a question for Max. I have a question for Max, if anybody... If I'm not interrupting anybody. Okay. Uh, about, about asking permission to have my Arcturian um, DNA upgraded. I was talking to Chikir about this, and she ah. said it would be good to upgrade it, right? Now, the reason I'm questioning this, because normally you would say just go to the website, you know, write the letter, uh, but she told me that the, the Lirans uh, gave me Liran DNA without me formally asking because I was thinking about it. I, she said subconsciously that's what I wanted. And so now, do I just subconsciously ask about the Acturian upgrade? Or do I have to go? Do I just write it? Oh, goodbye. Who's ever leaving? Um, no. Do I just? I, can you still hear me, Max? Because I see okay, another. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay, because there's other pictures in front of you. Um, 
so do I go to the if I just went the rep website route website route excuse me I does that my request go to the Arcturians are the are the Arcturians the one who upgrade me does it go through Grookvik near to them does Grookvik near do it do you know how that works yes uh, that project is by Grookvik near yes you apply through the website uh, it is not uh, applying mentally doesn't work very well uh, for some people it works sometimes hey Caitlin but for some people it uh, doesn't work we did experiments many times I send them messages while Jim is channeling and yeah. they don't get it right they can't oh. read my mind they say at least for my mind it was clear it's almost never they get a hit so for and Justin uh, our friend and helper with videos he is sending them telepathic message, messages he's telepathic and they just don't reach them he has, when he asks them and they say no we didn't receive them so okay, assume that your message is not received unless you get a clear confirmation okay well the reason I mentioned I don't know if you heard me because Takir told me that they gave me Lirin DNA without a formal application because I was thinking about it that's why I got confused do I just think about it or I Write it. Or what I think I you should write it. I don't know why they would do that unless there you were something very strong, <laughs> a very strong need or want for it. Your must higher you self must have asked for it directly in the colony. It must have. That's what she That's said. My subconscious. Would have done it. Yeah. She it would have not done it unless it was a hundred percent for you. Right. I, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I guess so. But then I was just wondering. Okay. Complain through human colony, uh, apply Windows, say, I complain about it. Oh, I'm mean. not complaining, I'm not complaining. I'm very happy. <laughs> I need a complaint box. <laughs> I was, all, all, you know, the address is very simple. Sign up to go at human call, at, oh, sign up to go at gmail.com, and there is a window box, one box for all submissions on human colony. Mm -hmm. It goes to Gmail address, which is sign up to go at gmail.com, and they receive, you know, they are free to check at any time. They have the technology. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, next so, time. How do you ground yourself? What's your way of grounding? Oh well, um, I smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Tobacco is very good grounding. Make sure <laughs> not to ground yourself too much. <laughs> no. Okay, so the other you'll, way. You'll put yourself into the ground. Yes. That's <laughs> what I thought. <laughs> okay. Okay, but you know, Roxanne said yesterday that the consciousness that tobacco is dangerous for mankind, you know, wasn't there in the beginning, and people weren't dying of it. And then when the consciousness came along, then everybody started dying of it. So she just said, "Okay, you know, if you think it's good for you, I know some, I know some people. They go ahead, Sabrina." I said, but the question is, is it in you? Oh, yeah, that's the question. So I'm working on that. But about grounding myself, thank you, Sabrina. Sabrina. So about grounding myself, I just meditate and I, I imagine my um, root chakra going deep into the ground and breathing in all the energy from the earth up into my heart, and then I connect the uh, I connect my crown chakra to the um, to God, universe, Christ consciousness, bring down a golden light, and I bring the earth energy, the earth colors up to my heart, and I have it meet together with the um, universal energies, God energy, Christ energy, ET energy, whatever central higher energies are up there. So I bring them together in my heart. So when I breathe in, I have two lines of energy. One going, they're both meeting at the heart, and they're both going out again, like this, up and down. Yeah. And then I do that a few times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's one how I ground. Ways, thank you, Sophia. One of the ways to ground, at least my, my way, you. would be to wash dishes. When you do washing dishes, as oh, a, yeah, yeah. It, the water flows, the dirt goes away, and the dishes become shiny, and your hands do all the work. And if you, if you do it as meditation, I think it's yeah. extremely grounding. And I did it for many years as a meditation. A cleaning up when you're in a meditating state. Uh, doing foot massage to people uh, who are close to you is, is very grounding. It's very physical, very third dimensional. And oh, very that sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I ground myself. I know people see a lot, actually. Yes, when you do Reiki, uh, doing foot massages, uh, 
I do uh, when I do Reiki. I end up massaging most most people. Some people have too sensitive a feet to massage. However, I end up massaging feet. You're right. That is very grounding. And you ground yourself in I, that person. Yeah. Yeah, I just walk barefooted all the time, and yeah. even when I go yeah. outside. There's many ways to ground, yeah. Yeah, I go to Ontario Lake and just walk on this border between water and sand, and it's it's uh, again as a meditation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, being with others and communicating with others in 3D, I think, is very grounded. Especially yes. for those of you who are so of this world, away from this world, uh, just speaking to 3D people is very grounded. Right. And Especially to police, is very grounded. <laughs> to be able, Nick, to be able for you to communicate with the world, you have to be three, third density. Me? Yeah. You have to be third density to communicate with us. Not necessarily. I just need a three-dimensional partner. Well, <laughs> well we, but the thing is, when you have a three-dimensional partner, it brings you into the third dimension. Problem with that as well, because I'm actually in the fifth dimension. <laughs> well... Whatever, but when you talk to us, we bring you down to us. Not all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll uh -huh. yes. No, I just, just do whatever I have to do to raise the vibration unconsciously while I'm in a room. Bro, well, it doesn't the vibration in third dimension is still can be still very high. Yeah, no, I didn't say it wasn't. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I even, even the lowest density is some the lowest dimension is this very similar to the highest. In some ways, yes. The alpha and the omega. Right. Um, I have a few questions for Max. Oh, okay. Um, when I was asking um, this do about the Federation of Light and Gertfrenier and and uh, the Council of Nine, I'm I'm a bit confused there. What exactly um, it's going on? Um, do you have an understanding of the three different ones and how they work? Because I know, okay, one is spiritual and um, the Federation of Lights, the spiritual side, and and Gert Furnier, it's more with things with the Earth. Yes. Um, all right, so these are questions I used to ask many times. Every time somebody uh, comes, uh, I would ask them, what do you think of this? What do you think of Fitnir? What do you think about Galactic Federation of Light? What do you think of Council of Nine? I didn't ask that often, but yeah, yet I asked about that as well. So uh, the number, yes, Nick, I know you, you I, I will ask your opinion just in a second. Uh, I, I know you know a lot. Uh, so, Georg Fittnier is very proactive working on very specific projects and they, uh, when, especially when I asked people from outside of Georg Fittnier, they say yeah, Georg Fittnier is a strong, peaceful military force, peacekeepers, which brought peace to a big sector of the galaxy. That is very real. Uh, they are very committed and very well structured in a very military organized strict way. They have order of command and gov governed by Arcturians. So members of Gurk Fitnir are committing to listen to what Arcturians say. The final word is Arcturian Council, which is a huge council. It's it's not only a few Arcturians, it's like Arcturian consciousness and a lot of representatives, it's like United Na Nations, United Galaxy. A lot of representatives of Gurkfitnir people, uh, people's races, and not Gurkfitnir races because they want to be aligned at least to have information channel to them. So that is very structured. Uh, and again, Ar Arcturians are non-physical, so it is uh, non-physically governed military peaceful force, which has a big project around the Earth on Earth. Uh, galactic and um, their presence here is big but limited in numbers. There at the time when I was asking about numbers, it was hundreds of workers, hundreds of physical four-dimensional beings working here, and maybe 
tens of ships, not 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 very many. They say now they have around maybe seven ships on Earth, that sort of thing. So they are very powerful, but numbers of individuals is limited, at least in solar systems. Uh, Galactic Federation of Light is very confusing because there are, there is a lot of channelings by Salusa and Sheldon Nidal and associated channels which give absolutely unbelievable numbers like millions of ships and many millions of uh, aliens filling the whole solar system which could be right but not very close to us. It could be other parallel realities, maybe they're counting multiple realities. So from our perspective, from what we gathered from through Jim mostly and a bit from the through Zakaria, a bit through Nick, was that, but mostly through Jim, that Galactic Federation is a very different alliance. It is a club of light workers. It's Galactic Federation of Light Workers, which has individuals, not races, taking part in that. And again, the numbers of individuals are very low from their perspective. Hundreds in solar systems and maybe, I don't remember, maybe thousands or tens of thousands in the galaxy. So it is, again, a very limited number of... So, Matt, when you said individual, you mean... Four-dimensional um, aliens. They're different species, but they're they volunteered to start this and activity. Again, uh, they are said to be very committed to help of to Earth, and they should have ships. Uh, they do again some uh, lots of channelings, and uh, they are in diplomatic relationships with Gorkvitnir and Galactic Federation of Light. Now. From what I gather, the Council of Nine is very ancient, and it was started by Nine, but have now lots more members. And it's non-physical, as I understand. And there is a lot of channelings related to the Council of Nine. So it, if you Google, there is I have a book of Council of Nine channelings. So a lot of interesting information, but um, there is also discrepancies and confusing things. So. So maybe there are multiple uh, point of views so at, at the same information, or multiple. Maybe there are multiple consuls of nine. So I'm a little more uncertain about consul of nine. We never spoke to. Uh, we spoke on the Karaya channel something which was related to consul of nine, but more than that, I don't know much. We don't didn't have specific. Uh, Focus on that, so I didn't research that as much. I never channeled Council of Nine. I don't no, think. no, not yet. I don't. Yeah. Think so I here, uh, yeah. what I do you want to do? Want digital to, being uh, Sabrina, how about you ask a little more, and then we'll uh, invite uh, Nick to to give his perspective. Nick, sorry, I, I'm still uh, holding you off. So no, I was just saying I channel the being named Nine. Nine? No, Nine. Nine. Okay. Oh yes, I remember that. Just hold on a second. I will I will finish with Sabrina, and we'll g give you the microphone. Okay, so because yesterday uh, Roxy was telling me that I, I don't, um, Nick, do you remember the exact word she used? But she said that I was working with the Council of Nine. Mm -hmm. That's possible. Um, yeah, I, no, I didn't hear it. Yeah, I, I don't remember what the exact word, but it's sort of like a, I consult with them. Um, I wouldn't doubt that. <laughs> um, and and I know you because know, I have a lot of dreams of like kind of meetings, kind of things. I I believe Sabrina that you're in a in one of their one of the intergalactic committees because you talk to all of them, and I think that you've been in a committee with all of them at the same time. I, that's the impression I get. Okay. Yeah. So, so you I, have so many languages, and they've come from so many different places. It only makes sense that you're in touch with a lot of different things. Right. Yeah, because I, I always I always seem to get a new one. And yep. when somebody speaks a language, I seem to be able to speak it. Sabrina, the next time. 
uh, an alien ar arrives, you should ask them that. And what exactly? You should ask him if you're in an, a council of some sort or something. Uh, somewhere where that you meet with a lot of different aliens. Okay. Because I get that. From all the things that you say, it just sounds logical. Yeah. Yeah, because I know I go to a lot of meetings, and I know I went to one where it was underwater. I remember that much. The ship See, went yeah, underwater. I think she's part... You're, you're in something that we don't know about yet. You'll have to ask them. And um, two, two different challengers have told me that I'm very busy while I sleep. Yes. Uh -huh. So, but, um, well, at least the first one, he didn't want to tell me what it was. Ah. It was a while back. Okay. And you remember that uh, you gave up your seat. Yeah. Oh, yes. I gave up. Do you remember exactly what they said? Uh? Uh, that you were part of the nine this nine council thing and you gave up your seat because you were so busy elsewhere so you gave up your seat and, and I think that you could uh, go back whenever uh, the time is right oh, okay um, Hajim that's can I add to that I think they also said um, Sabrina that you're an alternate so you jump in and out you're an alternate member when you have time yeah. <laughs> yeah, like yep. you didn't give it up totally, but you're you're like a substitute teacher, so That's to speak. The word, yeah. Alternate, yeah, that was the word. I was Alter there. alternate. Yes, yeah. Oh wow, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, you have to ask them about that, Sabrina. Yeah. There has to be something there. Okay. Is it a good time to bring Nick with his? Yes. Um, yes. So okay. Nick, the questions are. Coastal of Nine, Galactic Federation, and Gurk Fitnir, the relationship. Gurk Fitnir, Council of Nine, and what? Galactic Federation of Lightworkers. You can also bring in Ken Jean if you like, because he's also a part of that, too. I could, I just, um, possibly. Well, you'll see. What, what, time, what time is your next time? Uh, 2.30. Okay. I don't think I'm going to channel until tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah, of um, but, um, but, but it would be fun to have Jim around in 3D when someone else is uh, channeling. Yes, I... Yeah, I think, I think it's a wise decision. How about, Nick, you just uh, focus your energy on tomorrow and now be relaxed? I, I try to get into some of the channelings and they're all full, so... But I'm very busy otherwise, so I can't get into a lot of them. But because, like, today I have three things to do after I leave this. So, uh, you know, it's very funny. There are channelings happening in the sessions, and I'm busy with some more simple stuff, like answering questions, answering a lot of things, uh, setting up the permissions, writing instructions, and doing just simple maintenance on the site. So I'm like an administrator while others have the fun with channeling. Yes, and the other thing is, since I, I gave my phone know. number out, I get a lot of phone calls and a lot of Skype calls and a lot of uh, emails, so I'm constantly re answering a lot of things that I can't get on into a, a hangout because I'm doing a lot of uh, work with person, uh, different people. So there is a lot of new channeled news, like... Uh, that uh, there is some uh, something happening in Kenjin, Kenjin colonies, like they kind of wrap up some of the activities. Mm -hmm. uh, the, like 2027 one was cancelled, that sort of thing. And we, we learn it only from you. We don't, it's you, we, we never heard, if my face wasn't there, I, I didn't hear that. I don't watch afterwards. And unfortunately, I don't, I just it's, have, it's have others. I don't have time things. to watch any of them anymore. Yeah, okay, me. Max. It's really hard to to go back and watch because yeah, there, it's there's so little time. Especially okay. when they're in an eight hour video and I have no yeah. idea where they are. <laughs> so Max, I'd like to um, uh, I was there when Roxanne was talking about 2027, and the the message was that um, not that it was totally canceled, 
but there's like a few different Earths. Like that's what 2027 for those vibrating on that Earth. That's going to happen there. For those of us who are vibrating beyond that 2027 Earth, it's not going to happen. It, it was kind of hard for me to visualize <laughs> to get it what you were saying. But there's yeah. apparently several different dimensions and possibilities. So 2027 isn't absolute for everybody. That's what I understood. Well, it's only now. One, now today only we got another one. message. It's only for one or two timelines. Yeah. And that's correct. She's looking at all the timelines. Right. So there's the time. right. And then you got a message today, Jim, that you know it's changed. The amount of people harmed has left. lessened. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty awesome, right so there. Focus on positive and try to spin towards a good timeline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nick, uh, sorry for interrupting you. Oh, did I interrupt you? I'm sorry. I can't no, predict. Dick. You're talking. You're me. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. No one can actually interrupt me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's a very generous attitude. Um, but I do know. See, the idea is that we name constellations and things like that because it's our way of looking at ourselves as the universe. Mm-hmm. Just like the stories of Hercules, they go through the 12 constellations. Each of his tasks, the killing of the lion and the slaying of the, the river beast and all these things, he supposedly physically did them and they are written in the stars before that, but they believe that's because that's a matter of course. It's synchronicity. He was a real being and his story was already told in the stars. You know, so yes, every, yes, yes. Uh -huh. everything on Earth is a, on the quantum level, is a microscopic version of everything in the universe. So yeah. the Council of Nine actually first incarnated as human beings on our planet, and there were originally nine of them. Yep, that's correct. They called themselves the Eclemental Council of Nicaea. That's correct. That's, actually all I know about them, the Earth version of them. I could find more out. I don't even know where Nicaea was <laughs> or when it was, but um, they ascended. They are nine ascended masters, possibly descendant of Saturn, uh, the energy of Saturn, and or maybe that's where they remain right now in their dimension. In our solar system in order to assist with ascension and everything. And but there's more members now. There's uh, you know many multiples of three, you know, in their equations. So they have many council extra like extension councils of three here, three there, three there that are on the planet as star seeds. Then right now there's only they're saying I'm getting that there's only groups of three together at the moment. When three groups of three come together, they will have, you know, they will be a true full branch, a full trunk of the Council of Nine. So anyone that's feeling connected to them is a member. That's why Zachariah's channel said there's millions of members. Mm -hmm. True, they're in, in all reality, everyone's a member. <laughs> But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about how connected, how you reflect to that idea. Okay. If you feel connected, which a lot of people feel connected to it, for some reason, and they know very little about it. Bashar talks uh, very good about it, I think. I don't remember. I never really paid attention to what he said about the Council of Nine. I have a question for you, Nick, though. Yeah. Are they are they all connected, like Grok Fignir and the Council of Nine and the Federation of Light and all these other different planets, have they all kind of united now in a way? Or or at least are in touch with each okay, other? From what I understand, the Aran colonies are have have been around for a long time. Yes. Um, they're just high, in more in the higher technology, more a little uh, more futuristic timeline than Earth. Oh, okay. Um, I had a parallel existence on that planet, a parallel Nick Vancho. Uh, I think his name was Zach. Whoa, what the hell?
Um, I never knew that before. Okay. Well, he died anyway, but... Um, um, what was I talking about? That's okay. Uh, I will give you a second to digest that. Hey, uh, uh, just for, for your... Uh, for your sake, I will give you a minute to digest the new download. Uh, Ravi, hey, how are you? Ravi? I'm perfect, thank you. So, Ravi, uh, I'm feeling much, much better. My upgrades are complete. So. Oh, you upgrade. Uh, <laughs> Wonderful. Pentium 6. What did you get an upgrade on? Uh, upgrade. My illness, my sickness I've been suffering from all week. Oh. It hasn't been a sickness, it's been an upgrade. Oh. How, how did you find it out? Because if I'm sick like this, I know that my, I've changed, I'm more alive, I'm more... I don't know, something's changed. How did you know I have the Lyrian DNA. I, wow. Sorry, there's other stuff. And I did actually, I was in contact with Akatini, and she said to talk to more to Gurk Fickner about what's going to be the best of the Lyrian DNA that's going to be suitable for you because they're going to experiment with what's going to be best for me. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Was it through Jagger? No, I spoke to a Hakatini personally. Oh, through higher connection. Wow, cool, very cool. Yeah, my house off. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> so that's how I communicate. That's how I talk to my higher self and my guides and stuff. Is when I get a clear communication. But because I've been having so much resonance with Jaguar and Akatini personally recently, we were able to make that jump and make that leap and of trust. And that's how it works for me personally. Wonderful. Well, Sounds great. It's great. I have a special request. May I make one, please? Yes, yes please. Hello. This is my daughter Naomi. Hey Naomi, welcome. Hi Hello. Naomi. And Hello. since there's a lot of healers in here, and Matt, Jim, and Max are sitting together, um, she needs a little help. Can you please, uh, if you would be so kind, send some energy to her now? Naomi, what's your favorite color? Purple. Uh huh. What's your Zodiac sign. Uh, Taurus. Uh huh. Purple, very high color. One moment. <laughs> when is your birthday? Fourth May. Fourth? Yeah. Fourth uh, May. Of May. Yeah, I'm May sixth. Oh. Huh. say show then. Could you give her a blessing in any language or invite someone to give her a blessing? Just a moment. Uh, I don't know if her lesson. I Naomi's suffering from very intense panic attacks and she can't eat right now and can't sleep and has to go to work soon and I don't know what to do anymore. I tried. Yeah. How old are you? Twenty. I have suggestions, but I don't know if they're appropriate. Then uh, keep it for later for a private session or something. Yeah, exactly. That right now I wouldn't. Yes. Me too, I have. Ich ich will Yeke Luka Shah Namadisia Kushandia Vera.
there, are things, there yeah, there are things that need to come out. Yeah, because she's feeling like she's not here, practically. Like yes, um, she's living in a fourth dimensional existence right now. Yeah, that's what I'm batting. I'm getting that. But it's very. The images are very um, scary and negative for her. It's a. It's yeah. It's not a good thing. Hold on. Okay. However, yes, you you need to ground yourself. That's the first thing. But let's see. No, actually, there's something before that, but I I can't tell you what it is right now. Nick, are you getting something that she has to do first as well that should not be discussed? And what is she supposed to be doing right now? Supposed to be doing? Do you have to do something today? No, oh, work. No. Go to work soon. Work. Yeah. Mm. What kind of job is it? I'm going to talk to her because right now she's about to... Uh, um, she's working as a server in Red Robin, and the other job is working with disabled um, people, which is very physically stressful. I, honest, uh, do you like just serving better, serving food? She prefers with the handicapped, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. The serving food to people is not fourth dimensional job. I'm sorry to say. I had to get I had to remove myself from it because it only caused me pain. Yeah. Alright, let me let me uh, ease a little bit. I think I know me a little kind of tight now. I will I will just share my uh, my experience when I'm in that state. What what do I do? Basically one thing is I uh, my, my first step I kind of take a lot of I, normally I have carry a lot of responsibilities and the first thing to become less loaded to get offload the, the responsibilities from me I speak to people and say call them email them sorry I'm I'm, I'm not feeling well uh, I'm, I'm sick today I wouldn't I, w I cannot do that so I offload that and just you know send an email the moment I send an email or make a call or pass the message I feel a lot of relief. So that is part of the healing too. To, your responsibility is to carry as much as much responsibility as you can. You can't carry more than you can handle. Another thing is to look at the most brightest thing in your life at the moment and kind of spin that vortex better. So everything kind of is falling apart. Like one big vortex is falling in a smaller vortex as any kind of fade. So so focusing on something most dear and feed that flame allows me to carry to carry forward. So when I'm kind of mm, say under psychic attack or just sick, I focus on something which is most dear, most unquestionable to me. And right now it would be like um, maybe human colony project or my family or you know sometimes it's just poetry. You know, some just sometimes it's just a poem or a song which allows me to hold on to. Like songs are great, especially the inspirational ones. I have a couple of books which I know if I'm really sick, if I'm really can't do it, then I open that book and these books I read maybe ten, twenty times, and I just start reading, and it's just something that kind of wakes me to something forgotten, something which I hold on to for the whole life. So the books. And the movies, actually, some of the movies are the ones which bring me back to life. I come back and watch them again and again until I get get to the right state of the vibration. So it's, it's all about vibration. It's just how to get into vibration which is healing for you. In terms of foods, I, I don't know that state where I can't eat. I always, I always want to eat. But if you can't eat, can you drink? Can you breathe? You know... Listening to your heart is, uh, I learned to listen to my heart, and very often if I don't have energy, I just lay down and just breathe and listen to my heart and dream about good things. And Max? Yes? There's an Arturian here that would like to do some healing on her. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Welcome. Please go ahead. Thank you. 
popular. say no I think that was are you okay Naomi oh I wasn't if you're okay after that were you freaking out a little bit she was mm. I are turned down okay? the, I turned down the volume after a moment so yeah thank you Sabrina I just wanted to thank make sure that everything was okay yeah thank you everybody I'm so appreciative that you're all here together and sending some love thank you and healing we we love you, Naomi, really. And take it easy, take it easy. Don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah, this is just a game. Just game. Take it easy. Don't, don't think that this is your real life. This is just the stairway to heaven. And make it a fun game the whole time. If you don't like something, stop doing it. No matter what your mom says. <laughs> I'm always worried about the red money. <laughs> yeah, and always when, when, when I speak to children who have problems, I ask, hmm, mother, what is, what is it, it in you that is part of that? So it is usually a, a dance of two people which make it happen. So, Sephira, change yourself as well. Just whatever direction, just get out of that niche into some other niche, it will change the situation. That's why change I'm today, Sephira, change today and the situation will change. Yeah. Okay. All right. Blessings. Take it easy. And Thanks. now it's to the new topic. Okay. One of the topics I love is cooking. Cooking okay. is very good. Glad to see you. Much yeah. love, Naomi. Yes. Great. Thank you, Jim. You're Thank welcome. You, Thank you, everybody. I'll be right back. All right. Yeah, Indian food is amazing, uh, and it's very grounding, and just by changing the spices, you can change the whole life. Yeah, yes. I agree with that, too. I love Indian food. It makes me feel very uplifted every time. Cool. I'm going to start eating more Indian food. I like dragon food. I like Thai like food. Well, what is that, little girls in pink dresses? or No. <laughs> Ah, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> what is dragon food? <laughs> uh, I was just being funny, by the way. Dragon food um, is very... Dragon food is cannabis. <laughs> oh, all right. They oh, eat wait, that wait. mostly to survive no, underneath. No, no. That topic is not... No. Mm. Try to kind of, you know... Well, no. if you think about it, they, the Draconian King said that the pineal gland was the draconian contribution to human form. Everything in nature is reflective in our own body. Just like everything on earth is reflective of the whole universe. So nothing is taboo, really. You can perceive it that way. <laughs> like me saying to Safira's daughter that she shouldn't, she should just do whatever she wants no matter what her mom says. That's kind of taboo. But not to God. <laughs> yeah. And now we're changing the topic again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anybody has anything else to discuss? I have actually. Ravi, are you here? Are Ravi, Ravi, are you here? Hey, Ravi. I have a request to you. Major, do you hear me? How do you say in the military? Ravi. I do you read me, Ravi? Do you read me? Ravi. Ravi, do you read Major me? Major Ravi. Yeah, I just got in here. Nick is starting a new community and he needs a host for uh, his um, hangouts. You and what's another name? 
Franciszek are qualified to do hangouts for Nick. Would you be comfortable okay. and would you have time, let's say, for tomorrow to set up his hangout? I'm, I may be able to. It's a little late notice for me, but um, I can well, do what I can do. I don't know what, well, what exactly I can do yet. but Get in contact with Nick. And you may not have to do it all at once. He, ca he came out already. He came up with a name for his new YouTube channel. So I suggest set up YouTube YouTube channel for him and start the Hangouts on a new YouTube channel and help him to build his own community and we'll help him by advertising his his, his events. Yeah, I'm not YouTube oriented, Max. I'll let you know, I'm not, I won't, I don't know anything about YouTube. I do have a channel, but everything I ever do yeah, gets taken down to due to copyright and stuff oh, yes. like that. So I've never actually explored YouTube. I'm more of a Facebook, uh, yes. that type of area. Well, help, uh, help Nick to create a community. The present testaments on uh, Facebook and we'll help him to uh, fire it up and to get his own audience. So basically he needs a way to start hangouts, to, to host them and to invite people to hangouts. So Facebook would be one of the first places where he could sure. uh, build his community. Yeah. And Raoui, would you send me the, the, would you send me the site that you originally sent me for that uh, other thing other than PayPal. I changed servers and I, I can't find it. Oh, okay, I'll send you some links over Skype. Okay, thank you. Wait, because I want to look into them again and see if I can get into them now. All right, and we started. So uh, Nick is uh, inviting his uh, offering channel private channeling sessions. Jim is offering his private channeling sessions and come to the humancolony.org page, Nick, page, Jim, and you get all their contacts. Contact them for that. We are formalizing now. We are announcing the elections. Um, it will be a bigger organizing committee, which will structure smaller committees. And one of the committees we need right now, very urgently, is the broadcasting committee, which will structure our broadcasts. We want the broadcast to be of high quality, and to be reaching, so the invitations have to reach the people. We have 253 subscribers, and we want to send them concise, proper emails so they get announcements, and it's very convenient for them. And we are very happy that two established channelers joined us. One joined us big way, Roxy, and we welcome them. And another one, Treb. Uh, Rob Gaffier. Rob Gaffier. Uh, visited us briefly, so that would be very, uh, that was very exciting. And I am invited back to his radio show. Oh, you are. Yes. Excellent. So. But I'm not sure when yet. Good things are happening, and we are really. I'm excited. coming up too, Jim. <laughs> huh? I'm gonna come up and meet you at the radio station. Oh, okay. That's in Kalamazoo, Michigan. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Perfect. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be waiting. Actually, we did our um, we did our radio thing. I was I stayed home and we did it over Skype talk. So it was. Oh it was yeah. Fun. Yeah, it sounded like you were on a phone or something. Yeah, we was on a phone, right? Yeah. Phone or Skype? Well, it was on Skype phone. Yes. Skype phone. Skype voice. Yes. Yeah, Skype voice. All right. Is there anything else to announce? Uh, submit your self nominations for the organizing committee. An invitation on humancolony.org. So if you want to be in an organizing committee, that would be the proper place. Mm -hmm. Some people actually don't want to be in elections, but they want to help. So I need another invitation for people who... Just want to help. Just want to help and don't want to be... Uh, On the committee, yeah. mm, I guess right now that would be the main thing. So, so you can apply there and say, I'm not for elections, but I want to help. And uh, that would be great too. So we'll have administration and br just groups of helpers. Steve, I have... I ask you to join if you'd like. Steve? Is it Steve? Steven? Yes. Oops. Join what? Join the, uh, put in an application for the executive committee. Okay. Sure, sure I will. Also, yeah. I also have a question for you, Jim. Yes. Uh, can you still also uh, channel that Hodorian? I sure would like to hear from from that other species. That would be awesome. Earlier, with uh, Takira was talking about Oh, I'm not sure. 
Okay, I, I don't know if they're here yet or not. Um, from what I understood from Takur, they're on their way toward us and will probably not be able to channel till they get closer. But I don't know that for sure. I could try. Okay, yeah, he was actually going to bring them through, but uh, then uh, then they started. We they, there's a lot of people who wanted to question to care, and then uh, and that was awesome. I mean, and but uh, I mean, e either or, it doesn't matter. It'd be it'd be cool though. It really would. Okay. Yeah, I thought the same as well. I thought um, what kind of I thought to care was are... making space. What kind of species are they? Do you know? Uh, not sure. They lived on as a oh, it's a, oh, it's in my bloodline. It's oh, cool. Oh, that's cool. Hadar. Appreciate it. Oh, and, uh, okay. I have 3% of it. And uh, also, I'm a triple hybrid. You're, what, how many percent? Three? Yeah, I got 3% Hadorian. I got 3% Alpha Centurion. And 3% oh, wow. Anubian. Oh, my goodness. Those are three that we don't even deal with hardly. A little bit with Centurions, but not, uh, not others. Yes. Hadorian. So, okay. If you want, I could try to to channel that now. Yeah, please mute your That'd microphone. That'd be awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Have you ever talked to them before or anything? Uh, no. I, I've no. I had a ch uh, channel uh, with somebody else, and she told me my soul group with the Odorians and the Alpha Centurion and and uh, and stuff. And that's how I got the information. And I, okay. I did a little bit of research on it. It was a real, really light planet. Really. Uh, a uh, high, uh, higher, uh, I don't know, light intense, and they and they saw the calling to Earth, and and, uh, and they went to help, and then the dark saw that calling and went and destroyed their planet, as far as I know, in the Alpha Centauri. Wow. Uh, helped them get it from their planet. That's why they're traveling. Okay. That's why I didn't pick up on a planet then. Yeah, I think it was destroyed. Okay, let me. What does he? Can you hear me? Yes, oh, you're coming through very well. Can I come to you? Yes, please. Welcome. To the There is Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. Very good. Welcome to Earth. This well, Earth. Yes. Terra. Yes. You are correct. Humans. Yes. 
I am a Rodian. Tell us more. I am getting perspective. One moment to get perspective. Thank you. Who wished to speak to me? Was it? There was a gentleman there. Uh, he's Stevens. Steven. There is question. I am aware now. Yes. I am Zaha. Zaha. Welcome, Zaha. Zaha. I am a member of Herodia people. Uh, it is an honor to meet you people first time through channeling. Da. Yes. It is interesting to be here. The space is limited. Yes. Are you human looking? No, not exactly. Do you have bodies? Yes. Do you know any earth animal which look like your species? Animal? Yes. Animal. Animal. Not likely. Speak. Stephen, you're welcome to speak. Yes, um, I was uh, told I have 3% Hadorian in me, uh, in my bloodline, and I was infused at the age th of 3 uh, yeah. with a uh, Triple infusion. Just was not w wondering if I had more information on that. You have the Dorian eyes. Oh, that's sweet. Awesome. Did they tell you that before? Someone. Your eyes are Dorian much. Yes. The color and the shape. The shine within them as well. You have Hadorian thought patterns. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. You bring light to people. Very much so. The light that comes from your eyes is also a part of what you bring to them. They see it within you and you are special to them. Special to them. Da. Do your children live in families? They must, yes. Families are essential. So do you breathe air? Not your air. We breathe more, Stephen. Yes. There is more you want to ask. Um. Well, my other bloodlines too. Uh, uh, about the destruction of planet Hadar about the Alpha Centurions helping with us escape or whatever. I just wanted more clarity as to what really happened. The planet was destroyed by a force that we could not stop. It is not really spoken of at this time. The pains go too deep for our people because this has not been a long time since this happened. In our timeline, do you understand? But it has been destroyed. Yes. 
I will give more details later. All right, thank you. There are too many around me that are listening. Tell, tell me more how you look. Are you size of the humans? What size are humans? Uh, about little shorter than Pleiadians and little more shorter than uh, Lyrans. Size. Size. Yes. We are about your size. Slightly shorter. On average, but not necessarily. How many legs and hands do you have? <sighs> legs and hands. Two legs and two hands. And two eyes and a mouth and a nose? Yes. Stephen's eyes similar. Are our genomes compatible? Are they um, similar in any way? That would have to be explored. I was unaware that there was DNA from our species on your world as much as there is. Are you laying eggs? Are your children coming from eggs? Eggs? Yeah, no eggs. So it's live birth? Biological construction, DNA enhanced. Oh, so it's technically assisted. You technically assisted, yes. Grow your children in incubators. Oh no, no, not no, incubators. One moment. Yeah. Oh, that is better. We are a long way from here. I see. Our contact is shaky. Are you related to reptilians? No. And not to Lyrans? No. To Alpha Centurions? Yes. I see. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Um, first, what was your name again? I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't hear it. Zaha. Zaha. Um, is it correct that it is possible that your civilization is coming here um, to possibly as a refuge? Only if that is acceptable. I think it is. That's why I was asking. I think that's what, uh, why you feel called here. It must be agreed. What? Your first contact will be within years of now. We will be present. What color is your skin? Did you ask the color of our skin? Yes. It is silvery in color by your chart. Silvery with green tints. 
to it. And what? What? Uh, no, go ahead. What is your god? Oh, there is one god for all. The beginning, the starter. Are you familiar with Jesus? No. Who? What? It's an energy which is very influential on Earth, Jesus Christ. We assume such thing. Communication is failing. Uh, thank you for coming through. We really appreciate your visit and appreciate your information you gave to us. Communication is failing. We send you our Namaste. blessings and it's an honor to meet your race through that channel. I am Hello. Hey, Jim. Hey, what's up, man? Welcome back. Woo. How was that? Mighty strange. Mighty strange. I got a picture yeah. of a face, though. Oh. It, it looked like... Um, uh, how can I describe it? It was pretty, it was like more square face than usual. Seemed like sort of square looking. Um, I, it looked like um, there was technology implanted in the face. The Borgs are coming! The Borgs! Yes, a little bit. Not quite like that, no. I know, I'm kidding. <laughs> Steven, you got Borg eyes. <laughs> A boar guy? <laughs> Not a guy. No. Uh, wait a second, wait a second. It is very impolite to I'm talk about uh, something that of that diplomatic level. It yeah. is not you're, appropriate. You're we really appreciate the yeah. visit by um, the communication by Haidar civilization and sharing the information. What was the name of the guy? Uh, his name was Zaha, Zaha and uh, oh. It's not appropriate to joke about that afterwards. Uh, I don't approve of that. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, no, it was quite an interesting experience with them. Um, they didn't come in through like a normal channel. I don't know how to say it. It was like a rush. It was like waves going through your head. It was just like moving through. Could it? Could you tell that? It, it definitely it looked different. Like, yeah, yeah. It was like waves of energy, sometimes going down, sometimes going across, and I don't know. It was just a lot of waves of energy. It was very interesting. It was very different. Very different. Well, so, thank, thank you, you Jim. I thank you. Um, oh, you're welcome. Stephen, wow. tell us a little more about your experiences. Um, how did you find us and? Uh, uh, do you speak any alien languages? Uh, I don't. I don't speak any languages that yeah. I know of consciously. 
but pro- I'll probably do. Uh, but uh, I've been doing this for a while. Uh, I found y'all just by uh, over different other messengers that I've been going through and just searching and searching and searching. I knew at an early age that I didn't fit in. I didn't. I really didn't. So where so are you? I, where are you from, Stephen? I was born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas, JPS Hospital, uh, okay. Fort Worth. Are you in Texas still? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Very cool. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, all y'all. Yes. Thank thanks. Thanks for coming. Yes. And, um, we have such we have really a great community here, so I think you'll enjoy it. Yes, I was, I've watched most of all your videos. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, you already saw most of our videos? Yes, yeah, I've watched probably most, all, all, yeah, most all of them I've watched, yes. I cannot say that anymore. I didn't watch all of our videos. A lot I of our videos, either. I can't I can I don't have time to watch the videos. No, They're so long. Very tough choice. Should we make more videos or watch the old ones? And making more videos, it looks like way more important than watching old ones. Yes, especially Nick's are like, like eight hours long. I, I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't watch an eight-hour video. So I fast forward a lot and see what I can f- see, but eight hours is like, whoa, I can't sit there for eight hours. <laughs> Caitlin, you were silent today. Uh, do, do you have anything to, to say today? Me? Uh, Caitlin, Caitlin? Well, First of all, I'm proud of everybody, and thank you for channeling those beings. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't really have much to say. I was kind of doing some research, so, but um, I was listening in at the same time. So. Good. Are you researching uh, extraterrestrials mm-hmm. or something for school? Um, no, it's um, I was looking for Elvin stuff. Oh, I see. Trying to do some research, but how how are your languages yeah, coming? I didn't really find that much. Eh, they're going through okay. I'm still trying to um, separately speak the Lyran and the Elven languages. It's kind of difficult, but... Oh, the Elven language is very interesting. Can you say anything? My aha anya inia. Yes. I think that's Elven. Yep, that was Elven. And it does have a striking resemblance to Lyran in some spots. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it, that is cool, yeah. <laughs> Caitlin, you are, I th- when I see different videos, you are the most committed member. You possibly are the one who watched all their hangouts. <laughs> and uh, um, um, I really appreciate that effort. And uh, um, Thank also, you, you are. Did you submit your application to be elected uh, in organizing committee? I invited everybody, and I would like to have you there as well. Yes, everyone here should do that. Initially, the initial organizing meeting was for people who are channelers and who speak languages. And now mm-hmm. we, I think we'll have a bigger committee, which actually can't meet because there is only 10 spaces, and the committee, I think, will be like bigger than that. Okay. But uh, then we will have uh, subcommittees and, and uh, councils which can meet and discuss. Okay. Well, and also you you're constantly surrounded by aliens. So, um, have you seen anything lately? I mean, it's so normal for you. You don't even talk about all of them. So. <laughs> um, well, when you guys say that, though, it makes me feel kind of. Surprise, because I'm I probably am, but I don't even know it, you know. Yeah, that's they, probably they, true. You're they're just probably, saying it for granted. They're probably passing me day by day, and lately I've been aware of that. Like, hey, what if that old man passes by me, an alien? Like, but the thing is, I'm so used to it, I guess, and I'm I'm I don't know. I yeah, you, you guys are. say that, and I, it's like, well, I can't really tell whether. What what's even going on? And I don't understand how I'm having all these experiences. I haven't been having dreams of them lately, but if I have, maybe they're shape shifting themselves. I'm not sure, but I'm not really sh- sure how I'm exactly having a whole bunch okay. of experiences with them. You're, so. you're actually they're just actually around you a lot, and you just probably take it for granted now because you they've been there so long. <laughs> well, the only time I really notice them is 
at nighttime because yep. there's a lot of movement in my room, a lot of geometrical shapes, colors, energies. And yep. then if I go outside, I see their ships like hundreds. At, I can't say all of them are ships, but they look like stars and they move around. And yep, so, I see yep. Yeah, so yeah. It, that's really what I notice. And then sometimes when I'm around different people, like today, for example, I was in the dollar store. There was this guy that was really suspicious to me, and I was like, what if he was a yeah yell and I just I don't know I got that feeling and then um, I passed him and he <laughs> he said like he was like oh sorry I'm in your way and I'm like no it's okay and um, but no I get those feelings but at the same time it's hard to distinguish whether they are an extraterrestrial or not because they look exactly like humans you know at least the the ones I've encountered so yeah I understand mm -hmm. did Very you good. try using your cat for the astral traveling. <laughs> That's funny you say that. Um, actually, Nick, actually, um, he's been trying to get on my lap for months now. I just noticed that. He kept trying to nag me to get on my lap. And I was like, get off my lap. Why are you doing this? And he was just trying to do this for, like, months now. And um, But, no, I did it today. And I started seeing colors and stuff, but I didn't get it on my body, so yeah, not exactly. Well, my cat is my timekeeper. Whenever I am uh, late to a meeting or I have to do something, which I might no, not even be aware, but the cat comes and I, I stop whatever I'm doing, sitting on the computer, stand up, and then it, it comes that I really have something to rush somewhere. So the cat is certainly like keep, keeps an eye on time. Nick, I just realized that. Your tomorrow's webinar should be announced now. What is uh, the time which is convenient for you? Um, 10 o'clock my time a.m. Tomorrow. Your That's possible. Same time as that, New York time, Eastern Standard Time, right? Yeah. So tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, there will be a hangout with Nick. Which you think it will be a long one, or how do you plan it? You never know. Um, it will. Be as long as it needs to be. I would I would prefer it to be like the same five dollar donation. Okay. So possible. I mean, just a donation five dollars sent to. Uh, I forgot your. It would be Nick three three three. Can can you say your email address? My email address is yeah. Nick dot James three three three. At and gmail. Gmail. Mm -hmm. So I will announce that. And since Rabbit is not yet technically s s equipped for setting this it up. I will set it up for you this time and I think I should be able to set it up on the new channel which is the New Testaments. The Present Testaments. Oh, the present pre the, testaments. sorry, the Present Testaments. I will create a channel for you and I'll set as a webinar for you and uh, we are still inviting the hosts. I will not host it. I will just start it and we'll invite in the hosts and uh, the uh, technical people, the admins for the for for those for the future, uh, and I will. Uh, so, Ravi, if you can set up the group for Nick for the New Testaments, and I might be able to set up the free website for you, so you will have the starting platform, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, Nick is inviting offering private channel sessions, and you know his coordinates, and you can find them on uh, humancolony.org. And a Nick page on, in the menu on the left top. Uh, Jim is offering private channel sessions. I am offering grounding live consultations. I'm an expert in 3D, so if you have problem with this live, uh, uh, contact me and I will uh, consult you. So far, I had uh, three. I have one more scheduled today, and I'm open for more. It, it makes me feel fulfilled, and uh, uh, it, it's something which I enjoy doing. And Good. Uh, People so far have been satisfied. Yes, they have been very. Uh, and then here, I think we'll be wrapping up. Um, well, yes, I have a two thirty appointment, so I have to have a, a little bit of lunch before I go there, and I have to travel to get there. So, um, not all of my stuff is. Uh, so it's a Reiki. It's a uh, Reiki, and I'm also doing uh, yard work and stuff like that. 
I'm it's doing, different. but I Reiki their dog and I Reiki her, and then she has me do other things as well. So I get paid for Reiki and dog, dog and a person and yard work, Excellent. and cleaning the kitty litter. And I can also clean up viruses from your computer. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I also haven't started this, but I want to do it. I haven't had anyone ask. I had one person ask, but I haven't done it yet. Um, I, you know, have you ever heard of Dolores Cannon? Yes, yes, yes. she's a nice. Yes. Yeah, Cannon. I can, I can do those over Skype as well. What? Okay, you can do what? The past oh. life regression hypnosis. Yes. Oh, okay. Send uh, so someone on Skype. Yeah, she's doing. We that have first. we have a lady here that comes to our channelings all the time, uh, Sandy Becker. If anybody wants to get in contact with her, she's very busy this week with chan uh, past life regressions. Also, not to steal your thunder there. No, I, I just, I, I just like, I want to do it so bad. Yeah, very, very cool. I would come to you. That's cool. <laughs> well, that's another service you can offer. So. Yeah. Exactly. Very good. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you for watching and uh, become involved with us. Um, to receive announcements for these webinars, become a member of humancolony.org and you will uh, receive emails when the webinars are started. All right, and have a good day. Uh, how about we do a blessing? Okay, mm -hmm. just a minute. Let me see. I'll close the door for this. Yeah, all of a sudden there's a lot of noise outside. Hi, Zanata. Uh, hello, everybody. Hi, Jim. Hi, who's this? This is Zinaida. Hi, Zina. We're just wrapping up. <laughs> I, I know. I just pop up because I've never been in your webinar. I just pop up to say thank you for your existence. Oh, thank, thank you, you much. so much. Thank you for coming through and thank you for all your, your help and just being a part of our um, our the vibration here. So that's great. Thank so. you. I'll wrap up with a prayer. Thank you all that help us here today, all that give us peace, energy, love, and joy. We just uh, thank you for all of our higher selves, all of our spirit guides, and the movement forward that we see right now. We love you. We love each other. And thank you for this community of love. We ask that you would be with us and help us to structure better. Help us to find a way to get uh, more information to the world in a way that is understandable, loving, and kind. And we just want to be there to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, and um, I love you all. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Jim. You're Thanks welcome. and blessings, Jim. Blessings, yes, many blessings. Namaste. Namaste.